Hey friends, it's Jessie and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my A to Z project pan update. I mentioned this in my October Shop My Stash, but I definitely went a little MIA in September. The mental health has been a little shaky, but I am finally feeling a little bit more myself. So I am ready to update the projects, ready to get some more progress out for you guys. I'm very excited. So let's go ahead and jump in. This is Hellfire Club, not Babysitting Club. We just appreciate the masterpiece that is my Hellfire Club shirt, obsessed. So this update is not the most exciting update. I don't have a ton of progress on all of the shades, but I did manage to hit two pans. So let's go ahead and start, of course, with letter A. Letter A comes from my Natasha Denona Retro Palette and the shade I've been working on is Andy which is not in my palette, apparently. I think I put it in my singles palette, LMAO. I just had a moment of panic. Like it has been that long since I've used some of these shades that I don't even know where they are. Okay, I just popped it back into my palette, but Andy is this really beautiful cream to powder mauve shade. I used Andy two more times since last update for a grand total of six uses in the project. Bruce is having an aneurysm over here. I really enjoy this shade. I think it's very pretty. It's very easy to work through because it is that cream to powder form so even though I've only used it six times, it looks fairly used. However, it is a mauvey pink shade and with Halloween around the corner, I've definitely been gravitating more towards like pumpkin-y orange looks and this just does not fit the demographic. I'm going to continue working on this, but I figured I would update you. I think the two times I used it, I used it as like a lower lash line shade in conjunction with the next shade you're gonna see, fairly simple. Letter B comes from My Naked Cherry by Urban Decay, and the shade I've been working on is Bing, which is this pretty berry tone. Obviously, it's a Naked Cherry palette. It's just this cute like cherry pink. And as you can see, I do have a little baby pan in there. I used it four times since last update for a grand total of 35 uses to hit pan on this shade. These are, these are pretty dense. I actually really like panning Urban Decay shadows. I know a lot of people think that they're a little bit much, but I actually quite enjoy them. I do have a very big pan on the end here in Hotspot. I'm sorry, we just got back from Barnes and Noble and Bruce has trouble controlling his emotions. So he's very tired, but he doesn't want to take a nap. And it's just like, if you hear puppy whines, he's just refusing to go to sleep, trying to keep himself awake. This is my second pan in this palette and I'm loving how it's looking so far. I definitely want to reach for more shades in this palette in the future, but this is a good start for now. Completely forgot to mention the way I use Bing, it's been a hot second since I've used it, but I wanna say I used it as like an all over crease shade. Like I would put a lighter shade down as a transition and then I would go in with Bing just to give it that very smoky look. I love a good smoky eye, so that's pretty much how I've been using it. The next two shades are in my singles palette, so I'm just gonna talk about them together because I don't have an insane amount of progress on either. So the first shade I've been working on in my singles palette is Estrella, which is this really pretty rose gold shade from ColourPop. She's got Solstice, I believe. I used Estrella two times since last update for a grand total of nine uses in the project. I'm actually starting to get a pretty sizable canyon going in there it's not quite like an isolated dip but this whole half of the shadow if you can kind of see is like starting to look a little worn so i do think that it would be fairly easy to hit pan on if i actually like focused on it but your girl has been not wearing pink eyeshadow i've been wearing a lot of orange eyeshadow obviously but i do really like the shade i used it as an all over lid shade i don't know if it's the formula or if it's just this palette getting older because I believe this palette was from 2020 so it's only two years old. I find that this particular shade is very crumbly so it's like a very chunky crumbly glittery type texture so I've been actually using a different shimmer underneath it and then topping that with this. I can't remember which shimmer that I used. Oh actually I used it a lot with Bang Bang from My Naked Cherry. So I would just put like the Bang Bang shade down and then top it with the Estrella and that's primarily how I used it. I only used it twice though, so I'm not sure how different it looks from last update. I'll have to compare the pictures up in the corner, but so far so good. The letter F also comes from this palette and that is Feb's Gem up in the corner. It is this like purple mauve matte shade from ColourPop, the All Amethyst palette. I've used Feb's Gem two times since last update for a grand total of four uses since rolling it in and it's not looking any different. 
I used this one with Andy the two times that I combined it. Andy is just a touch lighter, so I go in with Andy first and then touch it up with Feb's Gem. That's primarily how I've been using it. Nothing crazy. Maybe we'll have some more noticeable progress in the next update, but I can guarantee you I'm getting a lot more use out of this bottom row now that it's spooky season. <laughs> and the last shade that I'm going to talk about is letter H, which comes from my Nomad Cosmetics Haunted Europe palette. I am so heartbroken. They discontinued this palette, so as soon as that happened, I was like... <sighs> I can't hit pan in this, but I'm trying to actually like use up my makeup. It's not doing any good just sitting here, but the shade I've been working on is Hoya Baku, Bachu, Basu. Still can't remember how to pronounce it. I Googled it like three times. The Hoya Forest shade up in the top here. It's actually looking very loved now, as you can see. I used it 13 times since rolling it in and we are definitely starting to look a little loved. It's kind of that super shocky texture where it's like the creamy like putty formula. So even though I've only used it 13 times, there is a dip going on already. And I do feel like it wouldn't take me too long to hit pan, especially because I'm using it on a concentrated like pencil brush or a detail smudger brush. I'm gonna try and swallow my pride and actually hit pan. I mean, it's a champagne super shock shadow. Like, do I not have 17 million of those in my collection already? I'm gonna just, continue working on this one. It's definitely, this palette in itself has gotten a lot of use over the past month. I've done a lot with this like blue row. I've done like deeper blue looks. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. And I can't wait to show you all the pictures of the looks that I've done with this one, but I'm definitely gonna keep working on it. So that is letter H. Letter H was rolled in last update. I try and work on five shades at a time in this project because I was so close to hitting pan on Bing. I decided just to bite the bullet and roll in letter H, which I'm glad I did because as you can see, I've gotten lots of use out of it. So we're only technically rolling in one new shade this update, even though we've hit two pans. And the letter that we're rolling in is letter I. Believe it or not, letter I was one of the hardest letters to find shades in my collection that like start with letter I. So I just kind of went with the first one I found, which comes from my ABH Riviera palette. And the shade that I've chosen is Inheritance, which is this light yellow shimmer. The reason I chose this one, not only is it like the first letter I shade that I have in my collection, but last year I did a lot of candy corn looks. I will include a picture of one of the random ones that I did last year, but I loved using a yellow shimmer as the yellow in my candy corn looks. And I feel because it's October and your girl's a spooky hoe, I feel like I'm gonna end up doing that again. So I thought this would be perfect. I'm gonna still do my cute candy corn looks for Halloween. I'm also going to be working on my panning project. So that's letter I. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot to update you on one of the shades. I am a dingling, but letter G comes from my Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. I was like, wait, this doesn't make sense. I was like trying to go through my head. I'm like, wait, I don't have letter G to swatch. And I was like, wait, I've hit pan on letter G. The letter G comes from my ABH Modern Renaissance palette. This is the oldest palette in my collection. So I definitely wanted to use it. And the shade that I have is Golden Ochre. It's kind of hard to tell unless you tilt it just right, but I did manage to hit pan on that one. I used Golden Ochre a total of 12 times since last update for a grand total of 28 uses to pan. I honestly thought it was gonna take me less uses to hit pan on this shade, simply because the ABH formula is very powerful and this palette is on the older side and because this palette is I think like six years old am I really gonna out myself this palette's so old I got this palette while I was still in high school and that was a hot minute ago so the quality of this is definitely not there anymore um, the shimmers the two shimmers are actually really good still the mattes are definitely very patchy very chalky especially for a light shade like golden ochre I use this as a base for neutral look, so I really channeled my neutral basic B warm tone neutral looks over the past couple months and Golden Ochre got a lot of love, so I just kind of use it as like an all over base shade and then go in with my neutrals, but I did manage to hit pan on that. I can't believe I almost let you guys go without showing you that. I am the worst project panner in the history of project pans. So here is the color story. We have Andy, we have Estrella, we have Feb's Gem. This is that Hoya Castle. It's a clear base with like a champagne shimmer, so it doesn't really show up on its own. I promise it shows up as a good inner quarter. And then we have Inheritance at the bottom. I'm very happy I got to share all of my new pans with you all.
I think I'm up to 22 pans in my collection so far, which is very good considering I've only been doing project pans for like a year. And even then I'm not always super consistent. But thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye friends.